markers offer a really intuitive project navigation in Cubase. But there's a lot of underlying things based around marker tracks that may not be as obvious. Let's take a look at some tips and tricks on how to get the best use of markers. Markers will live on a marker track. To add a marker track to your project, simply right click, choose add track, and select marker track. And I will move it up to the top. Now Cubase Pro 9 could have up to 10 different marker tracks whereas other versions of Cubase, the lighter versions, could have a single marker track. Now markers can be entered in by selecting the draw tool and we could enter position markers by clicking anywhere in the timeline but there's also cycle markers and cycle markers define a range. I can hold down control or command and drag across like so. Markers can also be entered in with keyboard shortcuts. On the Windows platform, you could use the insert key, but there isn't an insert key on the Mac platform. So you could just go to insert marker and define your own key command and store that so that you could drop in markers on the fly. The visibility of markers can also be changed by having track colors. So if I wanted these to stand out a little more, I could just go to my inspector here and choose a different color for markers so that I could see them more easily. There's some really easy navigation between markers. If you hit Shift N, or shift B that will navigate you to different markers. There's some handy keyboard shortcuts that I like to use a lot. For instance, one of them is a function where it's, and it could be defined in the key commands and it's called play until next to marker. So I have that set up for uh, option control spacebar. So now when I play, it'll just play that and stop when it gets to the next marker. So very easy to kind of navigate between different markers. Now, the cycle markers offer some really interesting functionality. One of them being if I wanted to set my left and right locators around the cycle marker, at this point, I could just double click and my left and right locators will be placed around the marker. If I enable the cycle by moving the hand to the top or disable it, we could do it like so. If I hold down the Alt or Option key and double click, we could zoom based around that cycle marker selection. Using the range selection tool, we could also define a range and if I hit Command or Control X to cut, we can now split that marker and have a marker that was up to that point and a marker after that point defined. And it will automatically increment to see those different functions. We'll undo that. We could open up the marker window. We could see our marker ID in position here, but if we wanted to name markers, we could just hit Control or Command M and this will open up our marker window. We could double click in the description field and just kind of type in a name. We can hit the tab key, which will take us to our marker ID if I wanted to change the ID, the time position, and the description. And as I type in the description, you may notice that it's just simply going to be entered in directly on the marker itself. So that way I could navigate and know that this is verse, chorus, guitar, solo, whatever that I wanted to do. Now these markers can be based on linear or musical mode. And I get this question a lot where sometimes someone may change the tempo of their project and all of a sudden the markers are off and not aligned to the tempo. So if we right click on a marker track, we could go to track control settings. And I think two of these functions are disabled by default. So again, right click, go to track control settings. And what we want to do is to select the hidden items on the left and we want to add them to the view on the right. And what we can see here is our musical mode as well as we could lock markers. So right now our project tempo is set to 91 beats a minute 
And if we wanted to just, we'll take a look at our markers. And if I change my tempo while it's on musical mode, the markers will retain their relative musical position. So let's say I go to 77 beats a minute. We don't see the markers change from what's going on directly with the music. But now if I put this into linear mode and we change the tempo, that will allow you to just simply, we can see that the markers will shift. So if you do a different tempo change and you notice that the markers are not lining up, make sure that the markers are set to uh, musical mode here. It's a question I get a couple times a year. There's some really handy range editing functions that you could do between markers as well. So let's say if I have a cycle marker and I select the range tool here, what we could do is actually just double click on a marker track and now we could define that range. So if I just hit control or command X, I could cut out that region without having to cut all the different parts. We'll undo that. Or if I hold control shift or command shift X, I could kind of just do an edit where that point of time is just kind of kicked out. So some really handy functions directly for that as well. So some different range editing and you could do this between your different markers as well. So if I just want to double click between those markers or those markers, I could define that range. Now, one of the things that if you have Cubase Pro 9 that you could run into is again, having 10 separate distinct marker tracks. So you may have one marker track for vocal edits, one marker track for arrangement, one for you know guitar parts. And you could just simply click here between to activate your different marker tracks. So if you wanna see your 10 different marker tracks, you could do that. Or you could see this little icon here on a marker track and that will automatically make that the currently active marker track for navigation. Now, once we wanted to have a marker track, well, you may run into the situation where you wanted to export the marker track and there's two different ways of doing this. So we could go to export it as selected tracks and do a track archive and that could be imported into any other project or there's a function where you could also if you wanted to export it as a MIDI file that the marker information will automatically be carried over in a standard MIDI file as well. So as you can see, not only for project navigation, but for different editing tasks, using the combination of position and cycle markers can really speed up your workflow in Cubase. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel.